welcome back another wonderful day of Photoshop I'm gonna show you how to remove a green screen it's pretty easy just a few simple steps there's more things you can do after to make it even look more clean and better and the coloring can be really nice right now this photo is a raw photo of myself the green screen also has some different coloring if you notice this the green is not evenly toned it's dark green light green and everything in between that doesn't really matter right now because it's very hard to get a perfect green screen especially with lighting like I had and the floor kind of curves into the backdrop so it's hard to get those curves even as well but Photoshop does a very good job of removing this kind of stuff with a few simple steps and let's get right to it first you have to do first thing you should do is duplicate your background layer because when you drag a photo into Photoshop it has this lock background so just you can make a new layer if you want or just hit command or control a and it selects everything and then hit a new layer and then just command or control C and it won't copy sorry go back copy and then paste so just copy the bottom layer so command or control a selects everything and that's basically it uh, the other thing you can do is also right click on the bottom layer and duplicate that layer and just copy it up and it makes a brand new layer so I'll just delete that one now I have a open layer and the background safe in case I have to come back and redo some things the next step is to go up here to select and go down to color range and this is going to select a certain color and you get to choose what color that is the default looks like this with fuzziness at zero and the preview down below at none uh, if you've done it before and Photoshop has been open for a while then it might not show the same thing so just bring your fuzziness to zero because the fuzziness might change the actual color you select make sure that's at zero then what you're gonna do is just select a color around whatever subject or profile you're looking to get rid of don't select the dark stuff yet select the closest color to whatever is around that body or whatever you're trying to remove it could be a different color you could want to remove some blue or some yellow or some red right now it's just green this is a standard thing so click it and then this kind of happens um, invert might not be selected as well it might be all black that's fine right now this fuzziness is what you're gonna be focusing on and that fuzziness tells Photoshop how much of that color to remove so the fuzziness is basically the amount of the green I'm trying to get rid of what I can do is go down here to preview and I can select any of these I like to use black matte and what it does is it changes this to a larger version of the small photo there the small photo is a black and white um, version and now you can actually see what's happening now just realize that the black is being kept Pretty sure I think it's no it's there we go sorry it's the black being removed so hit the invert so make sure your subject is not um, all black or, or cut out make sure the background is the part that's turning to black and that's what it looks like and then you can see exactly what's happening with can I move up I can't you can see what's happening with the fuzziness now what you should also do is especially if you have uh, different background shades like this is use this little plus button this plus is adding more color options to Photoshop's uh, fuzziness whatever indicator and what it tells Photoshop is also include these other shades and everything in between it which gives it more data to use as a reference and that's really basically what it does so I'm gonna bring fuzziness to zero bring this back to none so I can see everything clearly I'm just gonna click around myself click all the colors and shades I'm gonna avoid these little blue streaks here at the bottom and I click everything I can there's even these black smudges on the back wall in the photo it's not uh, lens stuff it's actually on the back wall and you can see right here it's adding more little bits of black in this cutout image and then I'm going to select a lot of this darker stuff just add more here and even though my fuzziness is now at zero Photoshop has a lot more data to use which means it's doing a better job by default automatically and as I bring this fuzziness up you can see it's getting even better now here is the important part because you might have to do this a few times and while I was practicing with this video I did this a few times and I'll zoom in just to show you that when I brought the fuzziness pretty much about a hundred or above uh, it actually removed a little bit of the back of my arms because there was some green reflection on the back of my arms and this happens a lot with green screens the green screen I was using is kind of shallow and short 
so I had to stand pretty close to it. And this is not a good thing. If you ever use green screens, try to stand as far away as possible and get as much light as possible. And that way you remove as much green as you can. But you can see there's a bit of green in the elbow, a bit of green on the edges. I can't avoid that, but we can fix it. But with this, the fuzziness is gonna bring it right up until it's pretty much removed most of the background. Not all the way, that's a bit ridiculous. It's gonna, I'm gonna be almost transparent, I promise you that. So just bring it up to here. I'm gonna say, actually I'm gonna go about 50-ish and I might even want to add a few more, a few hundred more clicks, clicks it feels like. Just some more options, it might be overkill, but it already helped a lot. Yeah, that even just that mass amounts of clicks around the body helped a ton. And there we go, even around 50, it's doing a really good job. So 50 is a good range to be around. Um, if you go up above that, you might need some more data, just add some more clicks right around the body and everything else you can, and just hit okay. And then what happens is it highlights me and everything else I, I have removed in the uh, select color range. So hit command C or control C, and go to a brand new layer and paste that in and now you have a cutout of whatever you just highlighted. The next step to do is to do this and there's a few different ways to do this um, but this is what I find is most fluent for me and actually the most uh, free to do things with. I'm going to select this which is the quick selection tool if you hold down so the one two three fourth button down fourth toolbar down hold down it might be on the magic toolbar or magic wand by default just hold down your mouse button and click over there. Make sure it's on plus, and then I just drag around my body or whatever you're trying to highlight. And what I'm doing now is adding another selection inside the stuff I already cut out. So if I go into the hair here, you can see that it's got just the right parts. Photoshop does a really good job of figuring these things out. I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna zoom out just to make it faster. I'm not gonna be perfect, I think you should spend uh, a good minute or so doing this, especially down here, if you look on the boots, this little part here, um, I'm gonna make the toolbar, toolbar uh, the brush, selection brush smaller, and that way I can get in there. Also, if you hold down Alt, um, or I forget what it is on Mac, on Apple, it changes it to the negative. So right here you have the negative and positive, so adding selection, removing selection, hold down Alt, and then it changes it to the negative. I can be very general there and it fixes itself. Fix the toe. Then I go up here and just check. I don't want this part, so I'm gonna go negative and remove that. And the blue stuff here is not even in the selection, which is great. The shadow is still there, but it's not in the selection. It's gonna be removed. I got everything up here. I'm just gonna do a double check of everything. That way I don't miss parts and I, let's say, cut off an arm by accident. So I have all the selection and simple rule, use layers. Many layers is very important. Make Command C, copy that. New layer, Command V. There's shortcuts to copy it to new layers, but we're just gonna do the standard stuff. So now I have an even cleaner selection with nothing else around. The next step to do, and this is uh, sort of beyond what's expected of removing green screen because if you look at the hair, anything with anybody with long hair or hair that comes out above the body will catch a bit of that green. It's very hard to remove it, but because it's right around the edges, what we can do next is do this. Go to the layer, your new layer. I'm actually gonna hold Alt and duplicate it just in case again, or you can go right click, uh, duplicate layer right there. Click here, I'm gonna hold down Control and I think it's also control on Mac, and I'm gonna click on the tiny image inside my layer. So the newest layer with the best selection so far, and what it does is it selects all things inside the layer. If I had other stuff in here, it would select it as well. This is a quick selection for anything in that layer. I'm gonna go down now, once everything is selected, and hit the new layer mask, this sort of square with a hole in it, and it makes this sort of silhouette color mask here. And when the, with that selected, so you can select back and forth, with my mask selected, go up to Properties, which looks like this, or go to Window, and down here to Properties, and it brings up Properties, and then Feather. So let's zoom into the edge of the hair here, just to show you here. So if I feather it, 
Um, the a good number is about one and a half, one to two points maybe. If I bring it up, you can see that if I really drag it up, let me just exaggerate this, it brings in all the edges and, and averages them into from zero to 100% based on how far you feather in. So I'm gonna go probably around, yeah, 1.7. I don't wanna be too much. And what this does also is it allows the image to blend a little bit with the edge on the background you put it on, whatever background it is. And then now I have my layer feathered and that's basically the bulk of removing most things. You don't even need a green screen. You can do it with anything else, any kind of background. I might take some more effort if there's stuff, like let's say you're in a forest, you got all these leaves and shadows and different highlights. Remove those is a lot more effort, but it's the same process. Um, you can use a select color range or you can just use the color or the selection, quick selection tool to highlight whatever you want. Photoshop is really good at averaging all your selections into a single intuitive kind of point. And that's it. Um, next, I'm gonna go into both Photoshop and Lightroom and do two different videos on how to make the green on the edges disappear entirely and kind of even out colors a little, a little bit more. If you wanna do that right now, the first step you might wanna do is go to this hue and saturation mask. So if I go down to my layers here, if I click up here in adjustments and, and click um, hue and saturation, which is right there, it's the second, second um, line down, the first on the left, you get this coming up, so double click that. And then I'm gonna click this thing here, this little bottom down arrow with the box that tells it to either go and attach only to, let me bring this out here, only to the layer below. So if I click it, the arrow comes over here, or I can attach it to all the layers, which means every single layer below it has this effect attached. I just want this one layer. This is a kind of a standard thing to do. Uh, where am I going? I'm gonna put this back over here hue and saturation. So what you do is just bring down the saturation a bit and this starts the removal and it makes the colors a lot more dull and that's fine because we can readjust those later. We can select which colors to bring back up but it brings down a lot of that green. So let me just zoom in on the edges here and we can hide it a lot more. So the green even on the top here is a lot better. If I bring it back up to where it was you can see it's a lot more bright and I'm quite red in this photo, but bring it back down and then, yeah, about halfway, minus 50 or so. That's a good start. And then later on, you can add more stuff. So that's a good start for getting rid of some of the green. And in the next video, I'll show you how to actually adjust the colors and make it really even and bring things out that you want to bring out. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.